If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. What we can do first is go ahead and label Q1 with its charge of plus 5e and then Q2 with its charge of negative 15e. And the question wants us to find the locations on the x-axis where the net electric potential, or V, is going to equal zero. And we can see that the x-axis has been divided into three regions. There's the region that lies to the right of Q2, there's the region that lies between the two charges, and then the region that is on the left side of Q1. Now it's going to turn out that on the right side of Q2, over here in this region, the electric potential actually can never equal zero. And the reason that the electric potential can never equal zero over here is because this region is always going to be closer to the charge whose magnitude of negative 15e is much greater than the magnitude of positive 15e. And so since this region of space is always going to be closer to the charge of greater magnitude, that means that the electric potential will never have an opportunity to equal zero. So we can actually ignore this side of the x-axis in doing this calculation. However, in the middle between the two charges, there will be a location where the electric potential is zero and also on the left side. So we'll start with the region that lies between the charges. And we could probably guess that it's going to be located a little bit closer to the smaller magnitude charge. So we can make a little mark right here. And what we'll do is call the distance from charge Q1 to that point that we just marked x. Now if we do that, that means that the distance from the point we marked to the charge that's labeled Q2 is going to be d minus x. And so we can now set up the expression for the total electric potential at this point that we had marked. And we can say that that's going to equal k multiplied by the first charge, Q1, divided by that distance from Q1 to that point, which we just said was x. And then we'll add that to k multiplied by the charge q2 divided by the distance from that charge to the point, which we said was d minus x. And then we're going to be setting that equal to 0. We could then go ahead and fill in the respective charges. q1, again, was positive 5e. And q2 is actually negative 15e. So what we can actually do is change this plus sign to a minus, and then we'll substitute in 15e for q2. Next, we can factor out a greatest common factor from the numerators, which would be 5ek. So we'll factor that out. And that would leave us with 1 over x minus 3 over d minus x is equal to 0. Now, 5ek is a constant. So if we divide both sides of the equation by that constant, it's going to effectively cancel away. And then our goal will be to solve for x. So why don't we add the 3 over d minus x to the right-hand side. We could then cross multiply. We'll add x over to the left-hand side to give us 4x, and then divide both sides by 4. And then we could substitute in the value of d, which was given to us as 24 centimeters. And then we can see after dividing by 4 that the correct answer to part a will be 6 centimeters. So as long as x is equal to 6 centimeters, then the total electric potential at that point will be 0 volts. Now, as noted earlier, there will also be a location on this side of the x-axis at which the total electric potential will equal 0. We can just mark an arbitrary point here in red. And then why don't we go ahead and call this distance right here from Q1 to that point x. And the total electric potential at this point is going to equal zero, so we can set up a similar equation where we have the sigma v is equal to k multiplied by q1 divided by the distance from q1 to that point, which we've called x, and then we'll add that to k multiplied by q2 divided by the distance from q2 to that point, and that distance will be d plus x. We'll go ahead and then substitute in the charges for q1 and q2. Notice again that because q2 is negative, we've included a subtraction sign here. We'll set that equal to 0. We'll factor out a 5ek again, leaving us with 1 over x minus 3 over d plus x. We'll divide away the constant of 5ek. We'll go ahead and add the 3 over 
d plus x to the right hand side will cross multiply. We'll subtract x over to the left hand side and then divide both sides by 2. We'll plug in the value for d and we can see in this case that we get 12 centimeters. Just be a little bit careful here because charge 1 is situated at the origin. The distance that we marked x is to the left of the origin. That actually means that that x coordinate technically is going to be negative 12 centimeters. So just be a little bit careful about the sign and you should have the correct answer for part B. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe. You can send your own question into the email address on the screen and I'll post the answer to it on YouTube.